All right, what's going on, folks? Larry with Packmaster Dog Training here. I just made a, about an 11-minute video for you guys you're about to see. So before I upload it or while it's uploading, I look, I watch the video, and I wanted to point out a couple of things. Um, I'm using the Mini Educator on a level 6. Super, super low, right? Number 6 out of 100. And when I first started, that was Luca's lowest working level, okay? He, he was barely feeling that. As the video progressed, whether he just became more sensitive or the e-collar became better seated, he became a little twitchy, okay? What that means is I could have lowered it even a little more, a five, a four, maybe even a three. So these are things that you have to learn how to do. So when you see that twitchiness, it's a little bit too high, okay? That's why he's becoming twitchy, and you'll see that in this video. Um, another thing, the two times I reward him, you see it wasn't when he got what I asked him to do. It was when he failed at first. The confusion came and he wasn't quite sure and then he worked through it. And when he performed the task after he stuck with it and worked through it, that's when the reward came. The first time it was a surprise, the second time he knew I had it. But those are just a couple of little things I wanted to point out in this video. Things that you have to learn how to do as you're troubleshooting, okay? So if I went back and did this again, I'd be dropping the e-collar even lower. So it wouldn't be on a six, it'd probably be on a three or a four. Okay, as long as he felt something, but when the dog becomes too twitchy, it's a little bit too high. Okay, it's not causing discomfort or pain, but it's it's just a little bit too much on the muscle. Do you understand? Okay, this is enjoy. Larry with Packmaster Dog Training. Uh, I've got a few requests for the same type of of information they want me to put out with the e collar training, but today we're going to try to get a little more advanced, if you want to say that. I don't know if I really believe in advanced e-collar training because to me, very good basic e-collar training is what we strive for. And then once the dog understands the complete language, then you could use it in, in, in advanced obedience. But let, let's face it, if you don't have advanced abilities, if you don't have advanced dog training abilities, you can't expect to do advanced e-collar work. It doesn't go like that, okay? This is just a tool. So the, the one request that I'm thinking of here, I got an email yesterday and what this gentleman said to me, he said, hey, I've gone to three e-collar seminars, I've been to several different e-collar trainers and I'm still not having the success that I want. No one is addressing my needs. And, and what he said was, I've learned more from your free videos than all the thousands of dollars I've spent. So thank you very much for that. What I'm gonna try to do now, he asked, how can I implement the e-collar without correcting or punishing the dog when the dog is failing to do what I want. Okay, so I had an idea. I kind of ran it by him. He said, yeah, I'd love to see that. What I'm going to do here, Luca, stop. Luca's not feeling good today, so I don't know how this is going to work out. Um, you see this little green box over here? Okay. We're going to use that as a place for Luca right now. I don't know if I've ever put him up there before. I may have, may have not. That's not important. Luca knows the place command very well. What I think is going to happen here is I'm going to give Luca the place command from close by. Okay, he knows it. He's going to go up there, no problem. Not using any rewards right now, although I do have a reward tug hidden on my, on my body. What I'm going to do is I'm going to keep moving back, little by little. Eventually, when I give him the place command, I think I know him well enough. What's going to happen is when I hit a certain distance, it's going to cause a little confusion. He's going to stop and he's going to look at me and he's going to spin or he's not going to know exactly what to do. He's going to stop his progress to go on the place command. At that time, that's where I will implement the e-collar. And what I'm going to be doing is directing him to the right choice. Not punishing him, not correcting him, but helping him. Guiding him through communication with the e-collar. I will not correct him for that. I won't correct him or punish him for being confused. And just so you know, I don't know if you can see that. I'm using the mini educator. That's what I use on all the dogs. He's on a number six, okay? So even though you know he's gonna get really strung out, Luca's not a thinker, and that's more of a Malinois thing, okay? My old dog, Bruno, my Rottweiler, if I gave him the place command in the middle of an open parking lot, he would find something to get up on. He would travel as far as he had to. He would think things out. One time I asked him to place, I wanted him to place on a, on a big concrete base of a light pole. Unfortunately, uh, Bruno found the, the Cadillac, the hood of the Cadillac first, you know. Luca's different. He's going to get to a point where he's, he's very reactive, okay? And so I'm going to help him. I want you to look right here. I just got my sound box in today from eCollar Technologies. 
This thing is fantastic. Greg, thank you very much. I love this thing. I won't have to carry the walkie-talkie around anymore. Anyone who's using e-collars, especially e-collar technologies, buy that sound box right now. Especially if you're a trainer and you're training clients. That thing is invaluable, okay? So you'll hear that when I use the e-collar. Like I said, once he gets confused, I will start tap, tap, tap until he figures out what stops the e-collar. I'm going to help him communicate what I want. When he figures it out with my assistance from a distance, that's when the reward's going to come. Only then. He doesn't know he's getting reward. It'll be a total surprise. Let's go from there and see what it looks. We're going to fail here. This is going to be sloppy. We're going to make a mess of this, okay? But this is the first time we're doing this. Luca's not feeling well. He just had diarrhea and he threw up a little earlier, so I don't know how he's going to perform. But this is what you guys asked for, so you're going to see it. If you see a break in the video also, guys, YouTube doesn't let me upload videos longer than 15 minutes for some reason. So, Sophia, if you see it getting close to 15 minutes, just hit stop and restart it, and we'll put the videos together, okay? All right, let's get started and see how this looks. All right, Luca, come here. Come here, buddy. Luca, place. Okay. Okay, see, so that's not a problem. I'm nice and close. Free dog. Alright, good. Good job. Okay. Now you see how jacked up he gets just from working with me, right? Hold on. Let me point out one more thing, guys. I've had people say, why do you allow him to get so insane? I don't allow him. I allow him to be himself. It is my job as his partner, as his trainer, to shape his behavior, not his personality. I will never try to crush his personality. That's who he is, okay? I shape the behavior, I don't shape his personality. Got it? Let's do this. Place. Okay. And the good thing about using this is he has to calm down a little and concentrate to get up on there. Free dog. Good boy. Okay, we're going to just keep moving back a little. Eventually there's going to be confusion. Sit. Place. Good. Free dog. Good job. Over here, Luca. That's a dog that likes to work right there. You love to work. I know. Okay, ready? Place. Good job. Okay. So you guys saw the confusion. He went to the wrong thing there. I tapped one time, you heard it. He figured it out. Free dog. Good job. Let's do it again. Move back a little further. I think right now there'll be some confusion, so listen to the to the sound box. Okay, you ready? Place. Yes! Good boy! Okay, perfect. That was good. That was good, guys. All right. So right where I thought there would be confusion, because he showed me a little confusion the time before, he stopped, right? He gets amped up and confused. Even though he knows the command, once you get to that certain distance, the confusion came. Then you heard me. Tap, tap, and guess what? That was letting Luca know, no, 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 wrong way, buddy. The second he turned around, I stopped, right? He got up there, surprise reward. Let's do it one more time so you guys see it again. We'll try to go back a little further. Okay, Luca, out. Good job. Now he knows I have the reward. That might cause more confusion because he'll get psycho. But, all right, let's go. Okay. Now this is going to be tough because he wants this reward. It's going to create a lot of, lot of craziness in him. Okay, Luca. Place. Good. Okay, he did it. Free dog. Good. Okay, so no confusion there. So one time, directed him with the e-collar, settled him down, and made it clear. Do you see that? Let's do it a, go further now. Place. Yes! Good boy! <laughs> That's my boy! Good job, Luca! Good job, buddy. Good. Good boy. Go have some fun. You earned it, pal. Okay, guys. That's what I thought was going to happen. 
and it worked out very well. That's dog training, okay? That's dog training. So when we come out here and we do something new, Sophia, if it gets close to 15 minutes, hit stop and restart, okay? So we can pace them together. I got my girl Sophia back. She's still not so happy with me and she's not feeling good. So thank you, Sophia. I love you so much. Hope you feel better. Okay, guys, so what you saw there, just like I said, eventually when we get to a certain distance, the confusion came. So I just tap, tap. As soon as he turns the right direction, tap and stops. If on his way there, he was to turn the wrong direction again, tap, tap, that's letting him know, no, wrong way, buddy. Turn around and go the way you were going. And when he does, there's no tapping. And then he got up there and the surprise reward came. Well, the first time it was a surprise. That's how you're supposed to use the e-collar, like an instrument. It's like a Jimi Hendrix, right? Not the big stick to kick the dog in the ass. And you could see, as I showed you before, that's as high a drive dog as you'll ever see. That's on a number six. Did you hear my new fancy voice box there? My sound box from eCollar Technologies? Did you hear that? Greg, you're the man. I love that thing. Thank you so much, brother. So after I got these phone calls and requests, I went online to look for advanced e-collar work. And you know what? These people who have been calling me and sending me emails, they're right. There's not much on there to show how you progress, maybe troubleshooting more complicated issues. That was just a small test, okay? So you see how he was able to kick back, concentrate, and figure out that what he was doing was wrong without ever punishing him. Do you understand that? There was no punishment there. He barely feels that. That's his lowest working level, and that's where we were training with. He very rarely has an e-collar on, so he doesn't get to feel it much too. You understand what I'm saying? So if you guys have something else that you want me to do with or without the e-collar, let me know because those were some good suggestions you guys gave me. People aren't getting the information out there. You know what I mean? They're just not getting the information. All the before and after bull crap that we see out there, it's not helping anyone because you're not seeing in the middle what's going on with those dogs. When very well, we know what's a lot, we know what's going on with a lot of those dogs. A lot of people know. So I'm going to show you the sloppy stuff, the crappy stuff. You saw where the confusion came. You saw how the e-collar cleared up that confusion. Do you understand me? Let me say it again. You saw how the e-collar cleared up that confusion and made it very plain to him what we wanted. I hope this helps, guys. All done. Thanks.